So my name is Eric Dunn, student pastor here. I uh, just want to say thank you for coming this morning. And if you're a first time uh, visitor or first time in a while or a long time or you've been a couple of times um, and you've never received your welcome or your thank you gift, uh, we have a connection card you were handed in uh, as you walked in. And if you fill that out, take the next 60 seconds, trust me, you might not miss a whole lot of what I'm saying, but uh, take the next 60 seconds, fill that out and make sure that you take that by the Blue Wall Resource Center and they have a gift for you. Just say thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Um, I'm going to do the best I can. I know that I'm not at 100% this morning, and I'm going to try not to show you guys that I'm not at 100% this morning, so I'm going to verbally admit that. Uh, this week has kind of been one of those weeks of, okay, here's, here's a little comeback from uh, celebrating five years um, being married to my wife, and so thank you for that for last week. felt like I missed out on a bunch of stuff, and I missed you guys, uh, but when you come back from something so awesome, and then you're like, okay... The week's just not going the way you want it to. Emotionally, there's something that's just, that was a little off with me. I was not uh, myself this past week and kind of felt like I hadn't been myself for a little while. And then you got like the, you come back from the mountains, right? Fresh breath of air. And then it's like, ah, Piedmont area. Like just, here's the trees, here's all this. So then you get to revisit that whole allergy, sinus season change thing again. So that's been a blessing. And, uh, and then now, like last night, I did something to my back. I blame my two heavy children. Um, I would blame Callum, but I think I hurt my back uh, playing around with Kelsey Lynn last night. So I'm going to kind of try to stay next to the podium. And if I make a funny face, you pay attention because then you'll know that I did something that was like, ah! So just to make sure that you're staying with me this morning, um, this is not coffee, it's water. So you're like, man, dude, drinks a lot of coffee. It's, it's warm water, I promise. All right. Um, so I want to, like last week, uh, we talked about can'ts and won'ts and hard truths, right? And the week before that, we talked about uh, a stick. Like basically what we see as a stick, God used as an instrument, and he, the person that he used, also, he would call himself, I'm not qualified, but yet God did an amazing thing in his life and used him, and then used this view of a staff or a stick and, and laid it down and it did miraculous things because God was in control, and then last week we learned about can'ts, how they need to become won'ts, and because those lead to hard truths. And some of those hard truths can set us free from not just ourselves, but from that of the outside, and I mean like the enemy, right? The, the, the sin, um, just Satan's temptation of not diving into what God may have called us and equipped us to do. Um, and so this week, I kind of, with Thanksgiving coming up, this idea of a table kept coming to my mind when I was asked to, uh, to, to step in for the series and um, mini series, independent series, whatever we're calling it, uh, shindig, we'll call it a shindig. And what happened, I kept thinking table, and maybe it's because Thanksgiving's right around the corner, and Thanksgiving's when we have to deal with people, some people that we may not like, some people that we may not have seen in a year, some very awkward, functional families, right? I don't want to say, you know, who puts the dis in dysfunctional? <laughs> All right. Uh, but but I mean, we all know that we can we've either had those awkward family moments or not. And but when we talk about the idea of a table, especially in the South, that's like where we all come together. You put aside your differences because we're all going to eat the same food. Right. If you don't want to talk to that awkward person, you just eat slowly. You eat fast. It means you've forgiven them. Apparently, who knew Southern breakdown Thanksgiving 101. But when we talk about, like, we normally hang out in the kitchen, right? Kitchen's where the food's made. Kitchen's just, that's like the heart of the home kind of thing. And then we get these tables, and we're like, man, let's sit at this table, and let's have a meal together and talk about breaking down walls and getting to know people. And so I started thinking, man, this is crazy, this table idea. And, and I started thinking about, you know, my kids. And we're sitting at the dinner table, and Callan's like a food processor with no off button. This one-year-old eats everything and then keeps eating everything. Like, he put his plate in his mouth the other day and started chewing on it. I'm like, that's not edible. I mean, you can lick it, sure. That would have been interesting to see him lick a plate, though. Uh, his hair, and, th and he's, he's just an adorable, cute, chunky kid. And, and then Kelsey Lynn is, uh, is a bit older, right? I don't want to say that she is food snobbish. I want to say she's food... What's, how can I make this Christian? Uh, decisive. She's very food decisive, right? She knows what she likes. She knows what she doesn't like. And when she eats something that doesn't, it's cut up differently, so it doesn't look like mommy and daddy's, and she wants what mommy and daddy have. 
gallons on his third helping and, <laughs> and taking mine and Aubrey's food. And Kelsey Lynn's like, I want what you have. And we're like, no. And the same thing. It's the same thing. It just looks different. But we, we offer her food and, and because we're a family at the table. And what happens is that she tends to push away back from the table, right? And, and that's normally like the kid's biggest fit at the table other than banging their head on the table, which thankfully she doesn't do anymore, but her brother may have caught on. Um, worried about my table, that kid's big. Um, and so she pushes away from the table. She's like, no, I don't like it. We're like, but it's, it's what you have to eat. We're not to that point yet. With, like, they're not, we don't treat them as teenagers yet. It's saying, hey, uh, eat or go to your room. Like, eat or something. We're like, no, you need to eat. This is all you're getting, though. So when you want a snack later, we just bring you back your food. Warm it up as often as it takes until she wears us down. Um, and, then, and then we turn on the, the Bible app, uh, the Life Church TV Bible app, which uh, has some of the stuff that we use for kids' ministry. She's like, ah. I'm like, That's whatever. Food or Jesus, right? It's still bread. It's still eating, feeding the soul. But this idea of pushing away from the table saying, hey, this doesn't look the way that I wanted it to. I don't like what it looks like, right? And I think we've all, all been there uh, from me as a child, broccoli. Uh-uh. Me now, broccoli. Yum, yum. <laughs> My wife can't stand the smell, so I don't get broccoli. Um, <clears throat> but what happens is that we've all been at the table. We've all had that spoon with food that we or fork that we did not want. They could do the airplane or choo-choo, and you're like, that's not happening. Right? We either like remove ourselves from the table or we end up making ourselves physically sick and like, Haha, yeah, you wanted me to eat that. We just give back, right? Things keep on giving. And, and so what happens is that sometimes in our spiritual lives we, thought, we find ourselves in the same spot. And that's, and that's where today it's, I just want to invite us to have a seat at, at the table. I just want us to have a seat at the table. We're going to go through some, uh, some scriptures and, and I promise. It'll all tie back in at the end if you stay awake long enough to find that rabbit trail with me. People are like, people fall asleep? It's like, I have that soothing voice that just, you know, I get it on Wednesday from students. They tell me I have a nice voice. Um, but where I want to start today is in John 13, starting in verse 12 through 17. And what we're going to see here is we're going to be answering some questions and we're going, to see, we're going to read the scripture, then we're going to state the question and, uh, and go back and, and just review like, where the answer is, right? Because nobody likes to word problems and like, oh, there's the answer. Okay, we didn't know that. Um, I didn't like that in school, so I, don't, I feel like I shouldn't do it to you guys. So it says this in, in John 13, uh, 12 through 17. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord. And you're right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are are, are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. What we're looking at is that they just sat down for the Passover meal. They all came to a table. They all were sitting at a table, and then Jesus basically says, okay, that's it. We're sitting around. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the thing that most people wouldn't, right? He is teacher. He is rabbi. He is Lord. He is God with skin on. He's not just a human. They saw a lot more of God in his humanity in Jesus than we see. We see in hindsight, which is, we see him as, oh, fully God. How could they not, you know, he calmed the waves. He spoke in the seas and the storms. Why do they keep questioning? Well, they didn't get the hindsight that we get. We see him as fully God, but sometimes we forget about the humanity side of Jesus. And what happens is that Jesus takes off his robe and he puts a towel on around his waist and he starts washing his disciples' feet. Okay, I wear Chacos about 90% of the year, and they're 10 years old. I do wash them every other year. Everybody's like, that's gross. Exactly. Okay, we're in North Carolina. Okay, we get dust, we get dirt, it sticks on the bottom of my shoe. My wife gets to smell my feet, and then I go and wash them 
for her because I love her and I don't want that to be the issue in the marriage. It's my big stinky feet. And, and so what happens is that if you imagine being in the Middle East, it's sandy, it's rocky, it's dirty, and they don't have all this water spigots everywhere like we do. So the grossest thing, okay, cuts, scrapes, infections, blisters, boils, those weird-shaped toenails that nobody understands how that happened, but you're like, uh, you can't go to the beach, you can't wear flip-flops. Like, right? It's like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to put a sock on. Like, it's just, I can't, I can't, honey. Like, and you might have a spouse that's like, hey, uh, rub my feet. And you're, they're like, you're like, hey, rub my, and like, uh-uh. Uh, have you seen your feet? Like, you know what I'm talking about. So feet can be like the nasty thing, right? They collect heat and sweat and everything because gravity pulls it down. And it is nasty, nasty, nasty. And, and they didn't have socks back then that I'm aware of. So they just had raw skin feet. And so understand, it was probably the nastiest spot or the nastiest place to watch, the, wash, the, the smelliest spot, the dirtiest thing. And God, God with skin on, Jesus Christ said, hey, I'm going to wash your feet. And we all, uh, some of us may know that Peter argued with him. He said, uh, I'll just take a whole bath because that's how dirty I really am. But here's, here's a key phrase in this. Because Jesus is serving his friends. Right? He's, he's serving his best friends in the most disgusting way possible. And they held him as a rabbi, a teacher, Lord. He should not be on his knees cleaning dirty feet. Jesus said this in verse 15. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Don't worry. I'm not going to have the students come out with wash basins and towels. And we're all taking our shoes off. I love you that much to not take my own shoes off. Okay, I think smell could probably carry from this stage. We're not going to do that, but understand that it's what Jesus was setting the example was, no matter where you think you are or what elevation of spiritual maturity you think you are, how often you've been to church, how long you've been a Christian, but why do we serve? Because Jesus did. It was a position of humility and equality. Jesus said, I came down to serve you guys. What does that look like? For some of us, that's not looking like a foot washing. For some of us, that's saying yes to, to serving here at this place or serving God where you work. Pastor Ronnie wasn't playing this morning. He is here, by the way. Uh, he's not preaching this morning. He's actually over in kids serving because we needed some volunteers this morning. We needed some help. And so we, we talked about it, and Ronnie's like, well, basically we, we asked Ronnie, hey, would you mind serving? And he was like, yes. A pastor that is willing to go over and serve where it is needed is being an example that we see here of humility and equality, not saying, hey, kids, is that, uh -uh, I'm the big guy on stage, shorter guy on stage, and, and that's, that's the kids thing. That's not where I'm supposed to be. I'm the preacher. No. And we all know Ronnie. He totally takes the example of Jesus and carries it with him wherever he goes, from hospital visits to serving in kids' ministry this morning. Whew. He might have a few gray hair, but don't worry, we won't be able to find him. Okay? Uh, so he might be back a little quicker. Um, but just to know that, that we're at this place, because Jesus set the example. He gave us a physical example. There we go. To follow. That we should follow and do to others as he has done to us. He came and served us. He sacrificed for us. And we should do that as well. And later on in, in, in John, he gives us another picture. Another picture. And I love it. Love it. So it's, it's John 15, uh, 9 through 17. So we just saw um, Jesus, they were at a Passover meal at a table talking. Jesus washed their feet, set the example. And that's why we should serve one another. Humility and equality. It says this, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. That is, God the Father has loved me. Remain in my love when you obey my commandments. You remain in my love just as I obey the Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. We'll be filled with God's joy. Yes, 
your joy will overflow. Just in case the disciples didn't realize that their joy was going to be more abundant than what they physically could imagine. He says, and this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay, one's, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now, you are my friends. Since I have told you everything the Father told me, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. So he had the question, why? Why should we serve? Why should we really do what, what God asks us to do? Whether it's here in this building, over in the kids' ministry, uh, coffee, and, and, and the welcome team, and, and I mean, even to take up offering. That's a help. That's serving. It's putting ourselves in the back of the line and putting God and everybody else in the front of the line. And we see that Jesus set that example. So what, what do we do? What, what are we to do in, in learning how to be used by God? And that's love each other by serving each other. See, Christ left a legacy. And we're the ones that get to carry it on. Maybe we haven't re realized that yet, but when we said yes to Christ, we said yes to carrying on his legacy. Even though people will remember us, most likely, because we're the physical representation, right? God made us in his image. And the power of the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. The only thing that makes us a little different than Jesus is that we're not physically 100% God and 100% human. Okay, he was fully God. So understand that Jesus gave us a command, and it's what we're to do. We're to love each other. That one's simple. This is my command. Love each other. I would say mic drop or something, but I don't know, maybe goblet drop. I'm, I'm not sure what Jesus dropped or if he ever dropped anything for that matter. But, but he says, love each other basically by serving one another. We overlook these things because we're like, oh, well, I love my church, but I won't serve my church. Wouldn't that be weird to say that you loved your spouse and never served them? That would look really strange to me because, see, Scripture tells us that we're both to man and woman in a marriage. Both submit to God before anything else. And then God is the head hold. Then you've got the man and then woman in, in, in their cultural context back then. That was a big thing for people to understand. For us, we talk about equality and being right next to our partners. But understand, we both have to turn and, and, and submit to Christ. Our joy will overflow. Whether you think about it or not, in the simplest things in serving God, your joy will overflow. Francis Chan said this in, uh, in a book, Unforgotten God, I think 2012, 2015, uh, one of those two years. And he he talked about this thing, and I totally relate, and, and it messed with me, and it still kind of messes with me, that I'm an outdoorsy individual by nature. I love being in the woods, in the mountains. I would go hiking with, like, just a hammock, if need be. My wife, not so much, so we don't go. And so what happens is that uh, we, tend to, we tend to see this, especially in, in, in some younger Christians, I want to get away from the world. So I'm going to go to the mountains, I'm going to go to the beach, and I'm just going to sit there with the Word of God opened up, and of course, the younger generation now takes pictures, because, you know, like Hotels.com, if you don't take pictures, was it really there? And so what happens, they take these pictures of this devotion or this Bible study that they're doing, right? Because the goal is that we want to get away from the world and closer to God. But God has told us that we are to go and make disciples, not go away and be by ourselves to get closer to Him. What would it look like, instead of going off by ourselves, that we got closer to God by doing what God has commanded us to do? Loving each other, not stepping away. Now, I understand there's a time and a place to get away and to be like, okay, I need a reset. God, I need you to, to tell me something. I, I, just, I just need some alone time with you. I get that. And so that's the part that I wrestle with, is like, I'm, 
That's something that I've done in the past. That's something I, would, I love to do. But it says, oh, hands on. How's that not going to get you closer to God spiritually? By doing what God has called you and asked you to do. Still messing with me. In what way can we be used by God? And that's by loving and serving each other, carrying on Jesus' legacy. And so here we are again. I'm going to go through another scripture. And this is uh, talking at a banquet. So Jesus is at this uh, Pharisee's house. They're having this conversation. He's going to use that as a teaching moment, right? Because when we come to the table, everybody, it's just, hey, we just share stories. And so God, Jesus saw this as a teaching moment. And he shared this one parable. And then this one guy kind of made, said a question, right? Probably a little snarky in, in most cases. And then Jesus answers his question in like another story or another parable. And so this is Luke 14, 16 through 24. It says, Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and I must inspect it. Please excuse me. At least they had manners. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. He didn't say excuse me, but okay. In verse 21, the servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he, he reported, There will still be room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will even get the smallest of taste of my banquet. <clears throat> Story that Jesus shared. And the cool thing about Bi the Bible is that when you look at it from a perspective of Man, the gospel, even throughout the Old Testament, is shared in every story and image and things that we come to understand. And so how does this point back to the gospel? There are many of us that, that have been in churches a long time, no matter what denomination. Um, you've, you've had an invitation to the table, right? Invitation. That's something we don't do often here, but there's invitation. You are invited to have a seat at the table because Jesus died for you. He conquered death for you and he continues to live for you. We get an invitation to the table. And like some of these people, and Matt touched on it last week, we've got excuses, not reasons. I can't because of this. I can't because of that. Or I won't. Man, Matt nailed it last week. Kind of messed me up this week because it's so it so good but understand that's what we see in this God saying hey I want to be a part of your life I want to get to know you I want to draw near to you I want to be the person that you rely on the most because when you have a bad week or you get bad information or maybe you can't come to church because you're taking care of other people or maybe there's just this diagnosis in your life that has just wrecked it whether it's happened before or to a friend or it may be happening this week and as we Get closer to Thanksgiving. I know that sometimes families coming together brings up a lot of pain. You bring up a lot of awkwardness, a lot of things from the past. And God simply says, I'm going to send my son to build this relationship and to do this for you. Regardless if you ever say yes to me, you're invited to the table. Jesus reserved your spot at the table. But like these people in the front of this little section, they push themselves away from the table and they're like, I'm good. I got some other things to do. I don't really like what you're serving God or what you want to give me to fuel myself or be able to serve others. I've got other things that are more important. And then we see that this banquet, this master, didn't just say, all right, we'll just cancel. 
it's good. I'm, nobody's coming. Just won't show up. You know, it's, we'll cancel. He said, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to send out more invitations. And guess what? We have more room. So let's get more people. So how, how can we serve God? How can we be used by God? And that's adding chairs and sending out more invitations. Make some room. Now, I know normally in first service, uh, when, when Ronnie's preaching in particular, um, there's, it's like packed and we're like, hey, we've got to add seats. Man, that is awesome. We've got to make room at this table here so that others in the community can come and find out what God's all about. But that's also by you doing what God has called you to do, what God can use you to do. You may say, ah, I'm not worth much. I, I, you should know my history. God can use a stick, people. He can use you. We're his prized creation over everything else. He didn't make a dog in his image. He didn't make a platypus in his image. Those are just weird-looking creatures. But he didn't make a platypus. He made us in his image. And he sent his son for us. No other deity, and I use air quotes big time because they all say, hey, I was human and I discovered a way of thinking. Come follow me. I'm intelligent. This will blow your mind. God said, "Uh uh-uh, I'm coming down for you. He set the example in equality and humility. He said, "Here's, here's what you're to do. Love one another. Serve one another. And we get invited on this journey to carry on his legacy. And we see here that he didn't just invite one group of people and said, oh, they said, no, I'm out. He kept inviting and kept inviting and kept inviting. He made room and more room until the people that need him came and they ate. So why? Jesus set the example. What are we to do in serving one another? What are we to do to be used by God, love each other, serve each other. How? Adding chairs and sending out more invitations. You've got to make room. Tables are important. Understand this, that a lot of this was table talk. People were sitting at a table. Before Passover, he washed their feet. They were sitting at a table. They were probably sitting near a table or around the table when, uh, when we were reading uh, two chapters later in Jesus' teaching in, in John 15. And here, he's talking about a table because he was sitting at a table. Thanksgiving's coming up. Understand this. The coolest thing that Jesus did with tables was this. Other than help his dad make them. Which I didn't think about that till now. Woo! There you go. Um, There is Passover feast. What's Passover? Jewish culture celebrates the passing over of the angel through Egypt when they were in captivity celebrating, hey, we are faithful to God. God did what he said he was going to do. We put blood, innocent blood, across our doorframe, and the angel passed over. So then they took this Passover meal. Jesus sat down at a table at the same Passover meal, and he said, looky here, I'm going to take something that might be considered old, old for them, culturally, and I'm going to make it new. This is my body that's going to be broken for you. This is my blood that's going to be shed for you in the upcoming days. That's the thing about Jesus. He takes something old and he makes it new. All he wants to do is just say, hey, come have a seat at my table. Come join me in sitting at this table. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you've done, what you're going to do. Come have a seat. Some of us have said yes to the invitation long ago and some others may have, we've pushed our Oh, no, I don't like what you want me to do. I'm not going to, this right here. I want what that person has. I want what that person's doing. God, this is the meal you gave me to do. This is a task you gave me to do. Oh, no, I don't like it. Here's the thing my, four year, my, my four-year-old, woo-hoo, my two-year-old asks when she gets pushed away from the table. Daddy, help. She's trying to scoot to the table by herself, and she can't. So she asks me to help. Maybe we've been pushed away from the table for a little too long, and now we need to ask God. When you say, hey, Daddy, I need, I need you to help me. I need to come back. And God's placed people in your life, throughout your life, within your life right now, to help you back to the table. We just need to say yes. For some of us, we say we can't, or now we say we 
won't. The hard truth. It was just a stick. How powerful could it be? We're his prized possessions. He can use us. For some of us, maybe saying yes for the very first time to this invitation to have a seat at the table. Oh, free food? I don't know who really turns that down. Or, a, oh, free gift? Oh, no, I don't, I don't want free. People love free. It's saying yes to the invitation. And maybe why is it so hard to love and serve one another? Why is it hard to be led by an example that Jesus set before us? Why is it hard to love and serve one another and carry on Jesus' legacy? Why is it so hard to make room? Because of culture and society, the way that it's come, for some of us, we've turned Christianity into a social status. And we've lost the respect of it being a holiness status. So I want to challenge you today to have a seat at his table, but also invite people to his table. Make more room. Maybe that's the biggest love and serve you can do is by setting an extra table or an extra chair at your Thanksgiving table. It's free food. I'm not going to say, hey, you know, unless God has said, hey, you need to find this homeless person here. When God moves you and the Spirit moves you to do that, invite them to come sit at your table. But there are people in your life that you're just not inviting to the table yet. Jesus set the example. That's why. What should we do? Love and serve. And how do we do that? It's by making more room. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for getting us out of bed. I think that's one miracle we take for granted is waking up every day. That breath of life so that you can use us for what you created us for. God, I know you've invited us to the table time and time again, and you use tables a lot in illustrations and teach from tables and build relationships at tables. God, help us find a seat, the seat you have for us at your table. Help us to understand it's okay to be used by you that it's you using us for your glory, us being the ambassadors, God, us being the visual presence in somebody's life because your, your glory is coming out of it. God, don't let us think of a stick and say, oh, what, what can God really do? Let us realize that we have a lot of won'ts versus can'ts, God, that we have this choice that we make. And God, help us to understand why you want to use us and why you do. You make your appeal through, to the world through us. Help many of us who have pushed away from the table ask for help and come back. God, help us say yes to the invitation. Just because we didn't get the seat we want or the, the food looking like what we wanted, but God, you said I'm here to serve. Forgive us for when we push away from the table and say, I don't want it. I don't like it. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen.